Uh, I'm Alex Skittings. I, I work as a solution architect at IP Fabric, so I help integrate our product with our customers on the pre-sales, post-sales side. Um, and really what I'm going to be talking about is the, the diagram that the, both the previous presenters have presented is this reference architecture and how we can go from the observed state and make sure that systems in the in the network automation tooling ecosystem is up to date. Uh, so we're really going to be looking at that connectivity between the observed state and the network source of truth. It's really important with our customers when they're on an automation journey, they need somewhere to, to store that information to make intended changes. That might be Netbox. It can also be other tools, but Netbox is one we, we are, are partnered with um, that allow, allow us to um, have a plugin to make it, it seamless. It's quite important as well because a lot of our customers, they've got brownfield environments. So how do you do brownfield automation? When you have a greenfield uh, estate, it tends to be a lot easier because you can start from scratch. Uh, but typically in brownfield, it, it tends to be a, very complicated. So I have IP Fabric up here. Darren showed some screens in the previous presentation, but I have a network here. It's fairly small. However, it can be quite complex to add this to a network source of truth. Um, IP Fabric has discovered this network. Uh, there's MPLS, VXLAN, et cetera in there. Uh, it's quite a complex network for such a small network. But the idea is I want this to be put in a source of truth so that I can start making intended changes. And Netbox is great because when we go to Netbox and you have the data in there, you can start using features like the configuration rendering to be able to derive configurations from the state stored in that platform. So on the screen here, you'll see a blank Netbox. If you've used Netbox before, you'll be familiar with the screen. And this is running in Netbox Cloud. It is hosted in their, their uh, cloud environment. And they have installed our plugin. We've been working on this plugin for a long time to make sure our customers get as much value from it as possible. But when it's installed, you'll see IP Fabric down the bottom. There is some um, things I have set up in Netbox to make this demo more seamless. But there is webhooks in place. There'll be the event streaming as well in future that will tell us when things have been added so we can start adding things dynamically. So I have just a quick yes. question. So because we talked about everything is outdated all the time. Yes. Let's say IP Fabric discovers a change. Mm -hmm. Topology is now different. Yep. How long will it take until it shows up in your I will diagram? show you. Okay. I will show you. Yes. So the first thing we need to do with the plugin is we, pl we support the cloud uh, primarily. Uh, but we also support the on-prem on version of Netbox as well. We, do, we don't discount our customers use both versions of the Netbox uh, ecosystem. Um, so I'm just going to add a, a, a source of IP Fabric. I've got IP Fabric, I've got an API key, etc. I'm going to say it's a remote collection because with a cloud, and there was a discussion, how does the cloud talk to the on-prem network? In this instance, it doesn't. The on-prem will push information to the cloud, but we need to know how. A URL. Ignore the local host, this will generally be a, a standard uh, URL as well. So when I create that, Netbox is actually sending information to uh, something in the middle that's actually bridging these two systems. And it's doing a workflow uh, that will add information about what IP Fabric has learned about. So now we have two snapshots loaded into Netbox. We can select one that the latest snapshot of the discovery. We can see how many devices, we've got 49 how many sites, et cetera. Now this hasn't made any change to Netbox. This just creates the kind of link between Netbox and what system we are talking to. And then we can create an ingestion process and I'll just call that tech field day two. I can then select the source and the snapshot I want to take the data from that in the actual data from IP Fabric. And what's cool is we've built in the system that you can actually choose what you would like to synchronize from IP Fabric into Netbox. So you can say, I don't, I just want to synchronize devices, not the interfaces. Or you could say, I want VLANs, VRFs, prefixes, IP addresses as well. So from a brownfield, a blank Netbox, we can start making some really cool stuff. So in the background now, I've just created this, I saved it. It's got some parameters, all true, because I want everything. 
In the background, there's processes in place that will go and add raw data to the snapshot uh, in Netbox. So this is the raw data from IPFabric. You can see the APIs that are coming through. This is for a, a VRF, I believe. So you can see the raw data. Now, if I go to the ingestion and press inject ad hoc ingestion, this can be scheduled as well. So I'm just starting it manually. And we'll start the ingestion process. Now, it's quite important to note that our data model in IP Fabric is totally different from the Netbox system. So we need some way to translate the data. So we have something in the middle that's called a transform map that will select the host name in IP Fabric is mapped to the name column in Netbox. And you can apply logic to that. You can apply Ginger filter. And it's very important because these different systems have different ways of defining the Netbox calls a host name and name, etc., etc. When this completes, it will tell us the intended changes to Netbox. It won't push the changes. It's in like a, a branch, if anyone knows Git. It's a kind of like a branch state. And you said it can be um, scheduled. So yes. is it you would set the schedule frequency that you want, or is there a? Exactly. So IP Fabric would do a periodic discovery of the network, and then via webhooks push out that information to Netbox and then start the process. So there wouldn't be anything that would say, uh, like it wouldn't be like active real time monitoring, essentially. It would be scheduled. Scheduled, yes. Then, yeah. So if if something comes up that's unexpected, it would be on the next schedule, it would it, see it, and then would it let you know? Yes, so we'll see it in a minute. Okay. Yeah, we'll see it in a minute. So in this instance, I'm just doing a, Netbox has nothing, pure ingestion, and just from that 49 devices that I showed you in IP Fabric earlier, now the plugin is stating that there's around 1,407, 1,147 proposed changes to Netbox. That's everything from creating the sites creating the device types, the platforms, the interfaces, the devices, et cetera. And you can see the diffs. There isn't really any diffs because we're always creating. And if I merge that into the Netbox database now, just wait a few seconds for that to complete. It's adding a lot of changes uh, to the database. As well, we're waiting one quick question. I saw this were all more or less until IP layer Yep. ACLs, firewall policies, you don't... Not at the any... moment. And that's because Netbox doesn't have the model for that yet at the moment, for ACLs, etc., BGP, OSPF, etc. So we're working on... There are some plugins that support BGP and things like that. Um, and we're working on adapting the plugin to work with some of those plugins so you could ingest BGP information as well. But at the moment, it's devices, site information, IP address prefixes, things that Netbox supports uh, by default. So from the open source project to the cloud, are, are we looking at all the features that are available in both products or are there a core plus model for Netbox? Um, so the, all the features are the same depending on uh, from cloud to uh, on-prem as well. Yeah. So Netbox, now we can see there's six sites being added. So I can now see my MPLS core. We can see that there's six devices being added. We can select one of those. Uh, I just will select one. And now we can see 36 interfaces, the interface descriptions, if there is any IP addresses have been added. So we've gone from a brownfield network to having Netbox know about that brownfield network so that there's an intended state now. You know you can start thinking about having intent-driven network automation because you have the information in there. So for example, Rich showed the configuration uh, templates earlier. Uh, I have some devices, uh, an Arista device, for example. If I select one of them, now it's rendering the full config based on the information that was ingested from IP Fabric into Netbox. And now the configuration rendering is now rendering the config for the device. So you can take an automation tool like Ansible, Python, whatever you want, to then push that to the device. And it's circular then. It's like a closed loop. So you guys have a architecture slide that shows the relationship between Netbox, IP Fabric, and all the automation uh, functions. That doesn't have to be the actual tools, but where the gaps are to get me to complete automation. 
uh, not not uh, not available at the moment, but uh, yeah, we could talk about that off offline. So what I've prepared is I've prepared a snapshot in IP Fabric now of imagine I, someone's gone onto the CLI, changed something. Now your source of truth is out of date. Um, I've I've kind of prepared that in my lab. I won't do a full discovery, but the demonstration is I've gone onto a device, I've changed the interface description to Tech Field Day, a TFD. Uh, and I'm going to simulate a discovery of that network now. Uh, it, this would be scheduled in, in real life in a real customer's network. So I'm just going to load that snapshot. When that snapshot is loaded, it's actually going to inform Netbox that a new snapshot has completed and push the information via API to Netbox Cloud. And then we can start a new ingestion to see what the intended state is different from the observed state. And we'll be able to see then some differences between the two. And that transform process is always happening as well, so we can manipulate data as we move it from one model to another. So I'll go to here now. So if we go to snapshots now, we'll see there's a, a new snapshot in here automatically that wasn't there before. It's called interface descriptions. It has some data in, 1300 this time. And I'm going to start a new ingestion. Now, the network is slightly different in some places, so there will be more changes, but we'll be able to see uh, the interface descriptions that we've added. In IP Fabric, we can go to inventory interfaces and search TFD, for example. Uh, we can see these two interfaces have changed description to uh, Tech Field Day. If I go into my ingestion. It's currently synchronizing, so it's going through the process of the ingestion. So when this is completed, we should see there's a number of changes. There are some, but the ones that I've, I've uh, specifically added for this um, demonstration will be in there as well. So we'll wait for that. Any questions? So is this focus on the Underlay, do you guys support like virtualized overlays like NSX? Uh, NSX, P, VXLAN, ACI, a, a large list of technologies from underlay to overlay. The question on compliance. So yep. we're always chasing this compliance piece, but the problem is that this is scheduled. So yep. I can't capture out of, uh, out, out of band changes. So emergency, something was changed. Mm -hmm. It was changed back. Compliance uh, auditor comes in and says, "Prove to me that this was an authorized change. I, I, th this no longer becomes a source of truth." So from, for me. from an IP fabric perspective, the way we'd approach that would be to um, build in capture of the snapshot as part of the change process. So, if it was an automated change, what, as I said before, everything is uh, accessible here over API, so you can trigger snapshot creation over API. So, if, so for example, to, but I still have to change my actual processes to be within this workflow because if I if someone logs into the box, yeah, makes a change. Sure. So I have to prove that I that this whole chain that it's locked into this my automation. Sure. By, by default, absolutely. But there is there are ways and means and this is some of the things the work that the solution architects do working with customers where you can we can trigger events in IP Fabric based on external things happening. So changes from syslog or whatever, you can, you can trigger events in, in IP Fabric okay. through, a, uh, through a, a script or, or whatever that can sit in between. But that's the work that these guys do, yeah. working with integrating not just products together, but process to yeah. the way that you use the platform. The, the, the main thing is every time you've got to think, every time IP Fabric has completed a snapshot, you get all the compliance done on that specific snapshot, the end-to-end -end paths that Darren showed, if you save them, it will check if it's still working or not, and you'll, you can get alerted, for example, if, if they're not working or they are now working because they shouldn't be. So can I create synthetic snapshots based on change logs? No, no. It's only actual in actual state of the network because we're looking at the actual state. But I, I have kind of a it's a time machine function. Let's say I take periodically time shots. I know it was working last Tuesday. I can go back and I can have the diff since last Tuesday until the state of now what has changed. Yeah. 
Correct, yeah. yes. So we can look at a network like this and see if we plan a BGP migration from OSPF to BGP, how it changes between date and if it actually works. So there's actually a routing issue here. And if you've identified the routing issue, um, we can then see when it's fixed, it's actually working correctly. So over time, you, you really do have a snapshot and a time machine of your network. So over time, you can see how it's grown. And then also for compliance, if your auditors are saying, what did it prove to me that it was broken before? You can now prove that you have made the changes necessary to be compliant. I guess the snapshots are just storage. So how long can I store this? Uh, as long as the database uh, is big. I'm there's just going to... There's a retention Yes, yes. yes. So I'm just going to show the ingestion has finished. Um, so now we can see a diff that the interface description would be changed because someone's gone onto the CLI, changed it manually, and now Netbox will be updated with the actual state to keep it in, in line. Kind of an analyzer, right? Yes. Yep. So now you have an ecosystem uh, between the observed state, the network, and the source of truth, so it's up to date. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Great job. Do we do we have a time for questions or? So it's more probably like uh, architecture questions. So yep. the way I'm thinking about like your product mm -hmm. and the other product. So our clients are storing the state of intent in things like Terraform, for instance. Yes. So now if I would be introducing your product into that mix, there would be another state of, you know, another like source of truth. That would be if so, you were to introduce Netbox. Yeah. yeah. So so are these like, is there an intention of how these two would be working together? Is there like sort of like any intention to merge it together and maybe using like a single backend for these two tools? Is there an intention? We haven't got to that stage yet. So, okay. but but obviously, and and speaking strictly from an IP fabric perspective, the fact that the API is as open as it is, the fact that you've seen what's capable, you know, what's possible with the plugin, that can be done with any other potentially. Mm. Um, the uh, the netbox it's using the structured database of the backend, right? Yes, it is. What is it? Is it Redis or what is it? Uh, Postgres. It's Postgres, Postgres. database. Yeah, yeah. So. Is there any way to sort of like, you know, maybe use like Terraform Cloud or something? As well, I mean, you know, there are integrations available with uh, with, with Terraform, uh, absolutely, with, with Netbox. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's completely open. You can integrate it with uh, with a ton of other systems. You may end up then with, you know, multiple sources of truth, which is ultimately what we're trying to get away from and have a network source of truth. Mm -hmm. um, so it adds a bit more complexity, but, you know, any integration is possible, really. Because it almost feels like, you know, if you would take the Terraform JSON, the state file, Mm -hmm. and use it as a database for the netbox and you would have like a one, one state this is almost like the ui for the terraform cloud state yeah. file right you could and it, right. it, yeah. it also depends on does Ter terraform support all of the, in some yeah yeah there right? will be probably like a differences in terms <laughs> yeah. of yeah. yeah 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 yes that's that's the thing i mean obviously from from ip fabrics perspective th that isn't the sole purpose of what what we're there to do mm. so we this is this is just a an a, a, another use case and another way of, of bringing assurance into the into the broader yeah. ecosystem. Because I'm just thinking like, you know, then I will have a two files which will be defining the intent. That can be like, that's too much, right? Like you need, you need one. But it's process, isn't it? It's, yeah. made, it's, it's understanding the particular use cases and being sure that you've, you're able to, to build some tooling that supports process and vice versa. Mm. So, okay, thank you. No problem.